Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 12, episode 10. So the episode picks up exactly where it left off, and we have Lisa Renna calling Sutton out about calling Diana soulless, an asshole, and a, excuse my French, motherfucker. And my question is, where the hell does Lisa Renna get off sitting at this woman's table at her house, eating her food and talking crap. You don't have any right to talk to her about her situation with Diana. You were not even there. How dare you sit back and listen to Diana spew all her lies and then sit down having that nice lunch at Sutton's house in the mud and question this woman. Lisa Renan just disgusts me sometimes. I was trying to relate to her, but it went off somewhere. Diana felt that her apology was phony and that's where I stepped in. I thought you jumped ship real quick. Define jump ship. I'm just saying we were having a great time at my party and then she sits down across from Diana and Sutton and it was just a moment. I mean, I'm not jumping ship. I feel like we're all on the same ship, just working through no, our No, that particular stuff. moment, it felt like you jumped ship real quick. I don't have any issues with anyone. So to me, we're all on one ship. I agree with Garcelle when she interrupts Sutton in the middle of their conversation to shut Kyle down. Kyle was over there making faces, acting silly, and then trying to jump in and say that she needed to jump into Diana and Sutton's conversation to try to figure out what was going on. None of that was your business. None of it. Erica jumping in to say that, well, Lisa talked to Diana. We don't give a damn. We don't care. Lisa didn't talk to Sutton. And then when she did speak to Sutton, she didn't approach her properly. You don't jump down this woman's throat like that. Now, my thing with Sutton is she has a good heart. She means well. And yes, sometimes she does say things that she shouldn't say. She does get involved in situations that maybe she shouldn't. Um, her reaction can be a little wonky from time to time. But all in all, Sutton is a good person with a good heart. And I personally don't understand why she really thought that that little hug with Diana was so sincere. I think that Sutton comes off as a little gullible sometimes. And I agree 100% with Garcelle. Kyle is wishy-washy and flip-floppy. Kyle blows with the wind. Kyle goes wherever the money goes. Whoever in the group has the most money, that is where Kyle sits. Or if it's the person in the group that she's afraid to go up against, she will side with them every time. Hi, Sanji. <laughs> Sutton. Wait, this is... I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry. Hi, Hi. my we name is Erica. Phone. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, no. Now, honey, listen, I would be Sutton. Very sorry, very sorry. I mean, I I don't want to FaceTime with somebody I just met on Bubble with the whole girl group. Are you kidding me? Put that phone down. You know, she says that she really likes him. I hope that we find out a little more about him as the season goes on. You know, it's not that I'm paying all my attention to Erica at all, but she said she was going to have only one drink. Under no circumstances, though, can you disrespect uh, not only a kid, but my kid. I agree and take full responsibility. Thank you. And you know what? I was talking and treating the kids like they were adults, and I was all wrong. There's got to be a balance of the meds and the cocktails. Well, it's not really that. It's a new medication that makes me sleepy. And well, that... What are you doing that? Why did you well, do that? Um, I've known Erica for seven years, and never once have I seen her lose her composure one never. time, so I think she's a lot, a little yeah. bumpier. This is what I mean by jumping ship, Kyle. Well, this is what I mean by jumping ship. I'm having a conversation with her, seven but years, I'm not two talking to you. I'm talking to her. I get what she's saying. In this moment, she just needs you to be neutral. I'm trying to have a threesome with Oliver. Ah! I would. <laughs> No, Me too, bitch. I don't care what Garcelle says. She was absolutely paying attention to how many drinks Erica had. You know what? I think that Erica did a good job apologizing. Her apology seems to be thought out. It seemed to be sincere. I think that she absolutely wanted to apologize to Garcelle because as she said in the car on her way over there, she did not want any heat. She did not want any mess from this Haitian mom, and she knew that she was wrong with, at, with the way that she spoke to Garcelle's children. You know what, I just felt that Kyle was jumping in trying to defend Erica and Erica's actions. If she was really sorry, 
you know, when she went out there online and posted that apology, if she was truly sorry when she apologized to Sutton a couple days before this lunch at Sutton's house, she would not be standing up for Erica and her actions. And I also thought that throughout the time that Garcelle was talking to Erica regarding her son, Kyle was rolling her eyes, she was making excuses for Erica and interrupting. I really like what Cherie is bringing to the show. I appreciated that she stepped up and said, in this moment, she needs you to just be neutral. I am making the comment that Erica deserves to let loose every once in a while. We've never seen her act this way before to have these types of incidents. We saw her yell at Eileen. We saw the way she treated Sutton. We saw her go back and forth with Camille Grammer. Erica acts out quite a bit. She's very aggressive and nobody uses the term aggressive with her but they always seem to use the term aggressive when it's a person of color. I appreciate Erica commenting Garcelle on the way that she has raised her children. And I can say this, at first I was a little taken aback because she said how well-spoken her children were. And those who are a part of the African-American community, we have a problem with that. You know, when some people say that, it's as if they're saying, Oh my gosh, I can't believe your children speak English. You know what I mean? But I know in my heart that Erica is not that type of person. Absolutely positive that Erica didn't mean anything negative by that. I know that she meant what she was saying. And Garcelle appreciated Erica's apology as well as the compliment coming from one single mother to another. I did appreciate that Garcelle brought up Erica's drinking on the medication. I do think that is a problem. And Erica's explanation of her medication makes her sleepy and tired and everything. If you know this, you know that you're mixing several medications and you have some that are new, some that are not, and you're drinking alcohol, you have to know that that is a deadly combination. It could have more consequences than just trying to flirt with someone's son and telling another person's son to F off. You could truly hurt yourself. Taking a cocktail of medication and alcohol is never a good idea. I do love how Cherie broke it up and made them laugh and smile at the same time when she made that comment about Oliver. Clearly, Oliver is a hot commodity. Then we see Garcelle and her sons at the shoe store. And when I saw them at that shoe store and how amazing that store was, it reminds me of this shoe store in New York City called Flight Club. And whenever me and my son go to New York, we always have to stop by Flight Club they are huge they were showcased one season it's on the show power that's on stars but my son loves to go there and everything is thing is extremely expensive so watching this with garcelle and her kids really cracked me up because it reminds me of me and my son and my son is a sneaker kid you know what i mean he is a total sneakerhead. he loves nice shoes he likes to match everything up just like her son Jade the thing is <laughs> I have a budget you know and I always tell my son my shoe budget for him is 350 bucks you are not getting more than 350 dollars out of me for a pair of sneakers that is not going to happen so if the shoes cost more than 350 you have to pay the difference that's how it works with us you know so seeing her put her kids on a budget of 500 dollars listen that's more than my son. He gets 350. When Garcelle sees that shoe and she says, what does it do? That sounds like me. I wanna know what all comes with this shoe. This is ridiculous. I think that Garcelle has every right to be proud of herself. I think it's okay for her to toot her horn. She has done a great job raising her son and she has made a life for them, a life for herself that she can absolutely be proud of. And she did it on her own. She didn't have as many resources as some of the other housewives have. You know, when she came out of her divorce, she said she came out pretty much with nothing. So she had to just start from there. And I think she should toot her horn as much as she wants to. She has done a great job. Then we go to Kyle and Maurizio's house where they are celebrating Hanukkah. And Dorit shows up, of course, PK is out of the country. So she, you know, is milking this storyline for all it's worth. She is so sad and scared and nervous and she can barely deal with the thoughts of him not being home because 
You know, when she had the burglar and he wasn't home, she is milking the hell out of this. The best thing about that whole scene was Dorit's children. Her children are so beautiful. Little Phoenix said thank you to the driver when he got her out the car, which I thought was super cute. Jagger explained what Hanukkah was. The kids are just adorable. I thought the whole scene was adorable. I was just so emotional watching them celebrate Hanukkah. It was just beautiful. So I enjoyed that part. So then the show had a five minute segment of Diana and her family. So I just fast forward. I said, oh, hell no. If I had been watching it on live television, I would have went through a load of laundry and I, I, I don't care about Diana or her family. Then Garcelle meets up with Kyle and Cherie for lunch. For me, I was like, oh, you know, she's gone through so much. She's sort of like being a little more free with us and letting her hair down. Vulnerable and you don't think her. that could lead to an alcoholism? You don't think Erica's trying to figure out all her meds and drinking is a problem? I see both sides. So clearly, what you both are saying is so valid and reasonable. First of all, I like the way Cherie was so fair. She was very fair about the situation. You know, she explains that both of them have good points. Kyle has a point. She appreciates the fact that Erica has been able to let her hair down, relax a little bit since she's been through so much, and Cherie can see that. But Garcelle has a point as well in her concern for Erica and this alcohol and pills. Here's the thing for me. Garcelle at no time called Erica an alcoholic. Not once did she say Erica was an alcoholic. The only thing Garcelle was doing was questioning the combination of Erica going through all of this stress, this hard time, the emotional situation that she is in, the legal situation she's in, plus the medication, plus the alcohol. She is not accusing Erica of being an alcoholic. And I tell you now, Kyle is going to go back and make it seem as if Garcelle was calling Erica a downright disgusting on her last leg alcoholic and she is going to drag this out for six episodes. I believe that. There's absolutely no way that Kyle is going to go back and let it be known that Garcelle was coming from a good place. Then they show Diana at her house bragging. Oh, she was braggadocious about all of her items, how much money she spends on her clothes, who sent her this, designer this, all of her parties, her celebrity friends. And this is the same lady that says she doesn't like to brag and she doesn't like it when other people brag. But every episode has been an infomercial of Diana bragging about her money and her material possessions. I really felt like this episode spent way too much time with Diana. It was too much. Erica was there talking about she's not jealous about Diana and all of her nice things but at the same time she's jealous of Diana and all her nice things and I think that Erica is absolutely hanging on to her friendship with Diana so that all of this nice things that she calls it that Diana is giving away maybe she can give it away to Erica I have no idea personally I do not like Diane's style everybody knows I have zero fashion sense but this stuff that Diana wears I think it's horrible and not only is that pink confessional look that she has, what the hell is going on? I mean, I don't like it. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. I think that Diana needs a new stylist and that's fashion stylist and hair stylist. Uh, Ma'am, oh, go on somewhere. But what else I thought was crazy is Erica says that when she was over at Sutton's house, she stayed a little bit late so that her and Sutton could talk and she could tell Sutton that she should try to restart her friendship with Diana. Give Diana another chance. Try to move forward with Diana. But then she's over at Diana's house talking about how Sutton and Garcelle made her act out of character last season. No, ma'am, you and your fraud, you and stealing from these victims allegedly is what made you uh, act out of character. Okay, all Sutton did was read the LA Times and then quote the facts. I'm just saying, I, I don't know. But Diana is a wreck. That woman is absolutely clueless and delusional. And what the Countess Luann said is true. Money can't buy you class and Diana is proof of that. I personally think the only reason why Erica is pushing Sutton to be friends with Diana is because she wants Diana to attack Sutton. 
I really do. I think that Crystal told Diana how her relationship with Sutton was. I think that Lisa told Diana about her relationship with Sutton and Erica's relationship with Sutton so that when Diana got on the show, they could use Diana as their attack dog against Sutton. That's what I think. Then we see Kyle out creating snow in her front yard. I think that is beautiful. I mean, that is beautiful. If you can afford to have somebody come and make snow out in your yard, do it. I think that is beautiful. I'm very complex because I'm very funny and witty and I'm a good friend. Right, Garcelle? Oh, yes, you're complex, yes. Thank you. Now, honey, listen, Sutton is a full-on mess. She is talking and waiting for Garcelle, and I tell you what, I know Garcelle knew Sutton was waiting for her to, to, to co-sign. I know she knew it, and that's why she held quiet. Sutton is complex, and she is a good friend. You know Garcelle was just playing with Sutton. The way you were provoking me at Garcelle's birthday, that was so inappropriate. What I did wasn't right. I'm willing to say that. What you did to me wasn't right either. What did I do to you? You mocked me. Do you know how you said it? Very so sincerely. You know what, Diana? I was trying to bond with you. I, I really feel like I need a professional help in communicating with you. Because if you think that was sincere, then you really have a problem. Are you hearing yourself? Are you all right, honestly? I'm perfectly is that, fine. Is that how you translate things in your head? Are you hearing yourself, No, seriously, Diana? are you hearing yourself? I think that you are also very delusional. Um, first off, I just have to say that I dislike this lady more and more every episode. I also would like to say that I am really tired of Sutton apologizing to her. Stop apologizing to Diana. She does not deserve all of this. She really doesn't. You don't need her. You are your own woman. You are your own person. You have your own money. You don't need to kiss Diana's ass. And I mean, Diana talks to Sutton as if Diana writes the check for Sutton's mortgage every month. And I need Sutton to understand that what Diane eats don't make you shit. You cannot let this woman talk to you like this. The whole time this scene was going on, I was staring and screaming at my TV, wishing that I could just reach into the TV and grab her up by that unattractive shirt. Ma'am, shut the hell up talking to Sutton like this. And every time Sutton tries to apologize, Diana just keeps going further and further. It's clear that Diana wants problems with Sutton. She doesn't want to clear things up. This is her storyline. And the thing that pisses me off the most is Diana wants to be the center of attention. She wants sympathy for her miscarriage, but she doesn't want to give sympathy to Sutton. She doesn't understand that Sutton is trying to be empathetic and offer sympathy to her. By the end of this little lunch, I said Sutton was absolutely right. Sutton was absolutely right. And excuse my French, Diana is a bitch. She is a soulless motherfucking asshole. I personally think that this argument between Sutton and Diana is one of the stupidest storylines, housewives fights. It's definitely going in the top 10. Diana is one insensitive woman. She doesn't care about anybody but herself. And the fact that she just keeps trying to put everything off on Sutton. Sutton is hard to talk to. Sutton needs mental help. She needs this and that. Give me a break. Give me a break. Get the hell out of here, Diana. I have had it. Listen, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. I am certainly over Diana. I need this to be her first and last season. I have had it. And did you see the previews for next week? It looks like Crystal is talking about her eating disorder. And at some point, Erica is throwing back drinks at somebody's house, at somebody's party. And she makes some kind of comment to Crystal about her not being able to eat a chicken nugget or something like that, which really offends her regarding her eating disorder. Listen, this is yet another person being offended by Erica while she is drunk on her medication and alcohol. I'm telling you, honey. I also seen in the preview, it was the debut of Kathy Hilton. She said she would be back on the 20th, and I believe that's the date. So I'm excited to see Kathy. I'm excited to see what's going on. I want to know what happens when they get to Aspen. I am ready for that Aspen trip. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.